Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I pray that y'all blessed today. Hallelujah. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name, just thanking you for these amazing opportunities to share a word with your people. I ask, Father, you lead me and guide me and that you bring up key points in my heart and that you minister and bless those who are listening and I ask this, Father, in Jesus' mighty name and I thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Lamb of God. I pray that y'all bless today. Hallelujah. I want to talk a little bit about fiery preachers. Hallelujah. Because the more fiery you become in your preaching, the more you are going to attract the hatred and the opposition of the world. And not just from the world, but even from those Christians who are living lukewarm in their relationship with God, they'll, they'll feel offended and intimidated by you because you are just a fiery Christian. You preaching the word of God, you telling people that they need to turn from Je to Jesus and turn from their sins so that they can be saved. And you confronting sin. You out there on the front lines of the battlefield. You confronting sin because God has instilled a fire inside of your heart. And you can't sit there and deny what God is moving you to do inside of you. Hallelujah. You go, you on fire. And what happens is you become a threat to the devil. Hallelujah. And he says, boy, I got to, I got to shut that boy up that boy's just getting a little too fiery right there that girl's getting just a little too fiery right there so what happens is he begins to increase the intensity of opposition in hopes that he can intimidate you to try to shut you up hallelujah praise the lord the devil is trying to shut us up he's trying to snuff out our fire he's trying to Put us in a place where we don't lift up our voices and be fools for Christ. This is what we are called to do. We are called to live radical lives for Christ. And the radical life is a normal life. It's a life of just being on fire for Christ. And when you are a fiery Christian and, and you're doing some fiery preaching, it's going to attract the attack of the enemy. He is going to try to silence you because you are becoming a threat to his kingdom. Because you go out there and you tell people, hey, you better turn. You better turn to Jesus. You better get right with the Lord. Judgment's coming. It's appointed once for man to die, and then there's the judgment. You need to get right with Jesus. God offers mercy, but you need to repent. And you become fiery, and you become outspoken, and the devil hates that. Because what happens is, you begin to trample on his kingdom. And it begins to stir things up in the places that you go to and preach and minister. Because you begin to confront people in their sin and you tell them that they need to turn. You start to wake them up out of sleep land. And you ever tried to wake somebody up that's sleeping? You know, you go into the room and you turn on the light and they just in a dead sleep. They in dreamland. And when you turn on the light, the majority of them, they get angry. They get mad. They might throw something at you. And this is what happens spiritually speaking when we go out there and we preach the word of God. We tell them about Jesus. We tell them about heaven. We tell them about hell. We tell them that they need to repent. What happens is it shakes up their little world. Hallelujah. And it begins to turn on the light spiritually speaking and what happens is the majority of them they get angry because they want to stay asleep they want to stay in dreamland you just shake up shook up their little world now and you come telling them that they got to repent 
that they're going to go to hell, that there's a judgment, and they don't want to hear about that. They want to stay in their little world of sin. And they get angry at you, and they get mad, and they start to oppose you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the objective in the persecution is to try to intimidate you. Satan wants to intimidate you so he can silence your voice. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. And if you're looking for the fire of God to ignite your heart, you need to be ready for the opposition that's going to come behind it. There's a price to pay for the fire of God. And you're going to have to learn how to handle pressure. Because pressure is going to come. You can't be one of them Christians that allows their feelings to get hurt every time people come against them and turn on them and, and start cussing them out and maybe pushes you because you're preaching the gospel or throws something at you or knocks your Bible out your hand. You can't be one of them Christians that get all touchy in your feelings and then you lash out in the flesh because if that's the case, God's not going to instill a fire in you. Why? Because you're going to mess everything all up. God can't use somebody that's going to allow themselves to be led by the feelings of the flesh. You need to walk in the spirit of the Lord. God will only use you at the level of what you bring your emotions into subjection to his spirit. So you're not all touchy when opposition comes because when the fire of God begins to ignite your heart, it's going to attract the fire of of the enemy the attack of the enemy is going to come against you he's going to come to try to silence you he's going to bring some heat against you hallelujah praise the lord and it's just like in the business arena you know when you look at them big business companies you see them guys in leadership and you know, they shot callers, they on the front lines and, and the reason why they shot callers, the reason why they on the front lines is because they have the ability to handle pressure. So the big bosses pay them the big bucks because they have that ability to not allow themselves to be shaken because of the pressure. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's the same thing in our walk with Jesus Christ. We got to be able to, to, to handle the pressure that's going to come against us and not allow our hearts to get offended because offenses is going to come. People are going to come against us. They're going to say things against you, us. They're going to say mean words against us. They're going to physically come against us. And we got to be able to have the ability to not allow what they do to us. To offend us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That way we protect the fire of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Because offenses is going to come. And a fiery Christian is a dangerous Christian. The devil hates that. The Bible says that those who love the law contend with the wicked. Hallelujah. So when the revelation of God's word manifests in your life and you start to fall in love with the things of God, it's going to move you to contend with the wicked because your longings is going to be God's longings. You're going to long to wake people up. You're going to long to bring them into a place of relationship with God through Jesus Christ by reconciling them with the truth. And in order to do that, you're going to get, have to get your hands dirty. Hallelujah. In order to lead people into the light of the truth of God's word, you must expose darkness. You must shine light in the darkness so that the darkness could be expelled. And the light here is the truth of God, God's word and the truth of God's word will bring opposition. Hallelujah. It's going to cause conflict. The Bible says in Ephesians 5.11, have nothing to do with the unfruitful works of darkness. Have no fellowship with it, but rather expose it. That's what the scripture says. This is what we are commanded to do, and this is what fiery Christians do. 
They have nothing to do with the unfruitful works of darkness. They have no fellowship with it. But what they do is they expose it. And when they expose it, it brings warfare. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the purpose of exposing the darkness is because you want people to come into the knowledge of the truth. And we got to expose the darkness with truth. If we see or a brother or a sister in our family that's having sex outside of marriage, you know this. You know they're in a, a, a relationship and they, they're having sexual relations. We are to tell them, look, man, you're going to go to hell. You know that, right? The Word of God says you're going to be judged. And what that is, is you applying that scripture in your life. Ephesians 5.11 Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose it. I'm not coming into agreement with them. And I'm uh, with it. I'm not condoning it. And what I'm doing is I'm exposing it so that person can see. And I can plant a light of truth inside of their heart. So maybe their eyes would be opened to come to the knowledge of the truth. And maybe the fear of God would manifest in them that they would be convicted. And say, okay, I got to get right with God. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. But not everybody does that, you know. Not everybody comes under conviction when you present the truth. Uh, a lot of them, they are numb. They're not even shaking or moved by it. But when you see people out there and you're preaching and you're sharing the truth and they're getting angry and they're getting mad, the reason why is that they're getting convicted. The demons inside of them are getting irritated with you. And they are moving to bring some opposition against you because they are resisting the conviction of the Holy Ghost. Remember when Stephen, in the book of Acts, he was preaching. And at the end of his sermon, right before he got stoned, he said, You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in the heart and ears. He says, You always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. And after that, the scripture says that they gnashed at him with, his, with their teeth. And they drug him outside and they stoned him. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. That's not the one instance in the Bible where preaching was going on and people got angry. Angry or anger is the evidence of conviction. People are being convicted. They are resisting the conviction of the Holy Ghost. So it's good when people are getting angry because they are getting convicted. You are dealing with their conscience, you see. So when you, you out there and you sharing your faith and, and you being a fiery Christian and it's attracting the attack of the enemy, the demons on the inside of them are getting mad because they are being convicted and they're thinking about what's going on and what's happening is just bothering them and they are resisting the conviction of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So what happens is their response to the conviction is not of repentance but it is of making warfare against the preacher who is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I pray that we're getting something out of this. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. So a fiery Christian is going to attract the attack of the enemy. Hallelujah. We're going to be God's green berets. God's going to build us up with His fire. And the more fire that we get, the more confrontive we get. We bring confrontational evangelism. Because we just can't help it. We see no other way to do it because this is what Jesus did. Jesus confronted the crowds with the truth. I mean, He rebuked cities because they didn't repent. And we've seen that with John the Baptist. We've seen that with all the apostles. We've seen that with the Old Testament prophets. They did confrontational evangelism. They confronted the people. The Bible says that the prophets used to stand at the gates. And they used to rebuke the people that was going into the gates. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God's system of evangelism ha hasn't changed. It's warfare. That's why you see in Ephesians chapter 6, 
which is the chapter of warfare where it talks about be strong in the Lord and the power of his might put on the full armor of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the enemy. It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities, spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Then it talks about the warfare. It talks about the shield of faith, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness. Then it says the shoes shod with the gospel of peace. That's evangelism. That's why evangelism is put right in the category of warfare. Because it's confrontational. You're getting out there, you're doing confrontational evangelism. And we are going into a wrestling match, a struggle against principalities and powers where we are in a struggling match trying to open up the people's eyes to the knowledge of the truth. And people are getting mad at us. They opposing us. They cursing us. Some of them are physically trying to harm us. And um, that's the reality of biblical evangelism. Hallelujah. It brings warfare. And when you catch a fire for Jesus Christ, it's going to put you out there. On the front lines of the battlefield, Satan's going to take notice of you. And he's going to try to silence you. And you need to be aware of this. Don't let intimidation stop you. Don't let opposition stop you. You need to catch a spiritual perspective, a biblical perspective on how Jesus says, Everyone who lives godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A famous preacher named John Wesley said these words that he went out preaching one day and um, he said that no one threw something at him or uh, at him like they usually do. They would throw stuff at him. And when he went out there preaching, he said on that day, nobody threw nothing at him. And he went home and he was convicted and he he got in prayer and he was like, Lord, what did I do wrong? Because he understood the reality that a real preacher, when you out there preaching the gospel, people are either going to get converted or they're going to get angry. And John Wesley said, if these two things don't happen when you go out there and preach, he says, you're not called to be a preacher. And this is a famous revivalist that God used to bring mighty revivals. He says, when you out there on the streets preaching, people should get converted or people should be getting angry at you. And he said, if these two things don't happen, he says, you're not called to preach. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let's not let the opposition intimidate us where we allow it to snuff out our fire. Hallelujah. Let's be fiery Christians. Let's understand that it is going to attract the attack of the enemy. It's going to shine light on the cowardness of some other Christians. And they're going to come against you and tell you, oh, you shouldn't be like that. You shouldn't do things like that. You shouldn't be doing this stuff. Because they're going to try to snuff out what, what God's trying to do in your life and through your life. And you got to recognize this stuff because the devil is really clever. If he can't stop you with intimidation, he's going to try to get some lukewarm believers to come tell you, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. You know, you shouldn't be doing this. But yet you know what God's doing in your heart. You got a fire inside of your heart for souls. And they come and trying to tell you, you shouldn't be out there warning people to repent, telling them about hell. It's because they're not out there warning them to repent and telling them about hell. So they don't want you out there doing that. Hallelujah. They feel shamed and guilt on the inside. And rather than standing up and doing what they are called to do, they're trying to stop the ones that are standing up and doing what they're called to do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So glory be to the Lamb of God. Recognize this. Keep your fire up. Know that a fiery Christian is a dangerous Christian for the devil. And he's going to move to try to stop you. Just be aware of it and be blessed in Jesus' mighty name.